Larry, you have said that the next five years, there will be more change at Avis than there has been over the last 70 years of its company's history. What do you think is going to be the key thing that's going to drive all that change? We shouldn't be afraid of disruption. We should really embrace it. Embrace those who are disrupting and find a way to partner with them. And that's what we've done with a number of the disruptors in mobility is, how can we actually work with you to, to find an opportunity for us and for you? Consumers are going to consume mobility differently in the future than they do today. And just satisfying the current use cases won't be enough. There's going to be multiple other use cases, as we've already seen with car hailing and car sharing. So do you look at Uber and Lyft as a competitive threat or as partners? We actually look at them as customers. Um, we're actually in business with Lyft. Uh, we, we rent cars to Lyft drivers, and that's starting to build, a, uh, you know, week after week after week. And so on one hand, it may be a disruptor that's actually perhaps impacting some of your business on one end, but it's on the other end, it's a way to actually get business from them as well. So give us a snapshot of Avis's future. What is it going to look like? How are we going to describe it, let's say, five years from now? We'll be offering more mobility solutions to consumers than our current offerings that we have today. And two, we're going to leverage what we do really well, and we've been doing well for 70 years, and that is fleet management as a service. Today, we're already providing a fleet management services for Waymo. Um, we provide fleet management services for VIA. Uh, we're, we're doing peer-to-peer -peer truck rentals with Fetch. Autonomous vehicles is important for us because that's going to be the future and we have to learn now how do you manage a fleet of autonomous vehicles and that's why the, the relationship with Waymo is extremely important. So what are we going to call Avis? It's not going to be a car rental company anymore. Is it a transportation company? Is it a mobility company? It's a mobility company and, and so what we want to be able to do is provide um, a, a mobility solution for consumers and how they want to consume, whether that's a monthly subscription, whether that's self-service, uh, whether that is a car for a Lyft driver or a car for an Amazon last mile driver. We want people to be able to consume it the way they want it. As you look at this whole new world of mobility, what are going to be the characteristics that are going to differentiate between who are going to be the winners and who will be the losers? We have a workforce that really is embracing it. They, they want to leverage technology to take off their plates the things that they don't really want to do where they can actually add more value for consumers and do things that consumers really need their help to do. The disruption that's happening, I actually think is pretty exciting. It helps us really think about the business in a very different way. You've been with Avis for 13 years and before that, 28 years with United Airlines. As you look back, what is the most important leadership lesson you learned through all those years? I, I think it's integrity and transparency, uh, communication, courage. The job is very difficult and there's lots of ways to, to get through the day. So it's important that people understand what you're really looking for. Uh, whenever we update the strategy, we go out to the entire workforce, we make sure that everyone understands where they connect to the strategy so they can really embrace it. Well, you've been here um, at Fortune CEO Initiative Conference, and what's the most interesting thing that you picked up, leadership lesson, this past couple of days? I think as you, as you take a look at how the workforce is changing, you know, one of the statistics that came out today I thought was really fascinating was uh, millennials will be about 50% of the workforce in just another year, and possibly five or six years, 75% of the workforce. And you know, I actually not had focused on that. And so as you think about a company and what we offer to attract new employees to the company, and what it is that they, that they really find important as far as uh, work-life balance, benefits, and, and those types of things. I think that there's some work that we need to do to make sure that we're really a relevant employer. You're going to uh, be leaving Avis by the end of the year, mm -hmm. and the search is on for a new CEO. And given all of the uh, changes that Avis is going to be going on and uh, reinventing uh, um, itself. What are the leadership qualities that you think that the next CEO needs to have? In a time of, of extreme transformation and change, which is what the industry is going through, uh, you've got to have someone that's um, that can lead through that or th lead through that transformation. And that means communication. That means clear direction. That means clear strategy. And leverage what we do really well as an organization. I think we'll be successful in this I job. Mean, certainly, uh, Avis will be going through a dramatic change, and leading through that transition has its challenges. Any way that you can say the do's and don'ts when you're in that position as the CEO. You know, in every job I've ever gone into, I, I really don't care much about what happened in the past. And I think it's really important that people don't look backwards and look forwards. And people don't want to rehash the past. Mm -hmm. uh, the past is not really relevant because everything's changing so much in the future. So I think someone coming in who could really just pick up and move forward and not worry about, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, why this, why that? Let's just move forward and find you know, the new ways to actually drive the efficiencies in the business and, and capture on the new mobility opportunities. And then there's the people challenge. Um, you know, Hiring new people with different skill sets that are gonna work in this 
new world and figuring out how to get the current employees on the same page to deliver on that vision of the new CEO. Right? Yeah. You know, we, we operate in 180 countries and 30, over 30 of those we operate corporately and then we have partners that operate in the, in the other 150. Mm -hmm. And so we have a very diverse workforce you know, all over the world and, and that takes a special kind of leader that can actually relate and communicate and aspire to all those different cultures. If millennials are going to be 50% of the workforce in just the next couple of years, then you have to think about how you recruit and how you train, how you reskill uh, uh, that kind of workforce and, and are you offering the types of benefits and so forth that are really relevant to that workforce. If asked, what would be the best advice you would give to the, the next CEO? Enjoy the ride. Um, just you know, relax and enjoy it. It's a great company. It's a great workforce. We have great customers. It's an exciting time. It's not some, a time to be afraid. It's a time to be excited and embrace it, embrace the change. It's a great job for the next person.